the uh, parts I did the electrolysis on back to the shop to set up, and uh, one of the things I'll do up front is apologize. You might you might hear some uh, background noise. Uh, there's three shops in the building I'm in, and one of them next door is running production. Um, one of the things I hope you noticed is even though we've got everything else looking good, parts of this top are, are still in fairly bad shape. Now, one of the things I'm really excited about is uh, I have an appointment tomorrow, and I'm actually taking this top in to uh, the person who's going to do the grinding on it. We, and uh, one of the best parts about it, I don't know whether I can talk them into being on camera or not and helping me uh, explain how this procedure is going to work but at least they're going to let us film it. So you're going to have an opportunity to see how we take something in this bad of shape and get it to where it's not only more functional, but also a hell of a lot less embarrassing. One of the things that I want to do, I want to do all the work on this top I can before I get it surface ground. I've still got rust here around the throat opening and my miter slots are really, they're just rough. And what I'm going to do is, and I want you to know, I'm not grinding anything away. I'm going to take a flat file. I'm going to pinch it against the inside of my miter slot. And all I want to do, I'm going to make a couple of patches. And I just want to make sure I don't have any burrs on there that's going to make it difficult for my miter gauge. Uh, or whatever you're using. I'm not going to use a miter gauge, but whatever you're using to slide easier. Huh? Okay, now I'm going to hit this with a brush. And when I'm using my rotary brush, uh, you want to make sure you're using a brass brush. Don't, don't take a steel brush to this because the steel is going to be harder than the cast. You're going to scratch it all up. But the brass is going to enable me. I can, I can lay this at an angle like this, and I can actually work over these slots and you know, get, them, get them cleaned up a lot better. There's a couple little dark spots here where I might have some rust down in there. I may decide to do something with that later. But uh, I'll do the same thing all the way around the saw. This throat opening needs to be cleaned. Now that's going to shine up like a new dime. Uh, one of the things that's unique to the Sears saws is this little hole I have here. Uh, what Sears used to do is, is they have these little plastic discs that press into there, and they call this the exacti cut. And the, the way this was supposed to work is when you cut a piece of wood, what you did is when you drug it back, you'd put a pencil line on this disc. And what that's showing you supposedly is how you match up uh, your lengths, with the disadvantage being you have to measure all the pieces individually. I will tell you, I found this is 75% accurate. I never made a picture frame that the first three sides didn't fit fine. In the thought process of uh, trying to figure out what to do next, I decided that before I take this to the uh, grinder, I'm going to paint the uh, bottom of the top. I mean, I've, I've got some minor rusty here. I don't have anything really loose. Uh, the paint I decided to use is uh, Krylon. It's called Color Master. This is a smoke gray, and it's actually a paint and primer in one. Uh, these little plugs you see, uh, weird-looking plugs you see, what I did is I took a piece of paper towel I'm going to fold this thing up and roll it. And what I'm looking for is I want that thing to actually thread in, more or less, all these locations that, that I have the uh, paper towels in are where we have bolts going in. And I figured I don't want to fill the threads in the housing up. So I decided to do that. And then, just so I don't have spray all over the place, I'm going to take some masking tape. And all I want to do is I'm going to run a strip of masking tape. That yep, should have known.
But I, I'm keeping that all quarter, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch above this bottom lip. I've already cleaned off the uh, rust on the sides of the cast. I don't want to get paint all over them. This is well shaken already. And I'm going to see if I can make this look better. Now, one of the things that's going to happen is in the grinding process, this outer rim is going to be machined down. So what we're actually going to have is we should have a shiny cast bottom edge on all the pieces that are level with the bottom rim on the saw top. And I, I, maybe it's just me that's I'm doing this for me. You look at it realistically, the only thing I'll ever see, this will be my dogs once I get this saw together. But uh, I guess it, it's just a point, you know, if I'm going this far, I want to make this saw everything I can. And I want it to look as good or better than new. One of the things I've been thinking about while I've been standing here spraying this thing is wouldn't this make a great project for you, maybe you and your children, you and your grandchildren to do together? You know, one of the things, sadly, that's not being taught to uh, youngsters today are any of the trades. And it's in your best interest and your child's best interest that by the time they get out of high school, if they have no intention of going to college, they need to be skilled in some sort of trade. You know, you, you can take one of your kids, work with them, play with them, really, and have them to a point that by the time they're ready to graduate, they won't have to start something at minimum wage if they walk into a place and say, I need a job. I'm at B&V Grinding in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts with uh, Bob, the owner, and the top he has right now face down on a machine called a Blanchard. And the first thing he was going to do is, is he's going to check to see how flat that top is because, you know, we're going to be pulling this down with a magnet and uh, we want to make sure that the top is shim properly so it doesn't try to rock during the grinding process. It just seems to be, only, it's kind of strange because the five, you know, it should be able to fit a five easily, but right here it's 20, so it's kind of... Wow, so that's, that, top's act, that top's actually bent down. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't doubt that. If you take a look at some of the damage on it, I, I, it looks like they use this for a workbench. So now we're going to just bring the table in. We're going to set the uh, wheel to the uh, pot, and then we're going to start grinding it. So in, in other words, what's going to happen is this table is going to move under yes. the ground. Right. Yes. Okay. First of and, all, we're going to put the magnet and, on. And it spins at the same time. Right. Everything spins. And okay. I'll show you as... So we're going to put uh, full power on the magnet. That's on there. Wow. You can't. That sticks. <laughs> you can't pull it off. Wow. You couldn't, okay, could, so. couldn't move that top with a truck, huh? Yeah. Now, you know, one of the things I, I hope you folks understand is during the actual grinding process, there's covers that have to be closed for safety reasons, but Bob's going to give us a good idea here when he's setting up exactly what's going to happen. Okay. Okay, I want to move the camera here a little. Jogging, so we're over the buttons so I can see. And I'm going to come down so I'm close to the buttons. What's the diameter of those, uh, that cutting head? Of this? 32. 32, that's why it's a 32. It's oh. a table 60, the, the wheel itself is 32. Right. That explains why you see those large semicircular marks in the tops of saws like this. Right? It's right. because of the large diameter of the, the now, head. The Now what, that, the head spins, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to 
shut it, and then I'm turning on that. Yeah, see, one of the things that uh, I hope you understand is these six holes, remember the ones we filled up with the uh, tissue, the six in the center are the positions where the trunnions mount, so it's absolutely imperative those be flat, otherwise you could have your trunnions twisted. That's amazing, Bob. Yep. But the only thing I didn't do, which I want to do, now, uh, what steps do we need to take now? I mean, we, we know that you know these are parallel. These right? are parallel right now. Okay. Well, they're not. They're not parallel to the uh, thing because it's all shimmed up. Right. Right now, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to um, I'm going to release the magnet to about ten percent. Oh, so in other words, you can increase or decrease the magnet exactly. according to I what can, parts can, are on it. I can increase it or decrease it to whatever I want. Ten percent, twenty percent, half okay. the mag. Right. But I'm going to put it, go pretty low because this is not very thick. Right. I should say that it's, it's kind of on the thin side, so right. I need about 10%. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go back in, just make sure. So the magnet, you just adjust the control on it? Yep. that down. <laughs> oh, you moved it out of there just to clean the table? I'm putting all the grid on. Okay. took the ta uh, table saw top off the uh, machine, uh, rinsed the table off very well, rinsed the part off very well, and what he's going to do now, I think he's going to flip it over. Okay. While it was off camera, uh, Bob actually cleaned the bottom of the saw top. One of the things he's especially cautious of is the uh, holes where the bolts go in. Uh, he blew them out with air just to make sure if there was any contamination in there that when he flipped it over, it wouldn't dump it on the table of the machine and actually make the top unlevel. How's that feel? That feels nice. That feels nice? That felt nice. You should, should be able to fit anything under there. That's a 
So he, he's taking a 5,000 shim going around it. So uh, at this point, it's to decide how much material we got to take off the top to make this thing flat. And you can see what he's doing here, marking it up. That's what it looks like from the plants. I want to move my camera here a little. I gotta get over here and check this out. I can't believe, I honestly can't believe you were able to clean that up. Oh yeah. The only, thing, I, the only thing I've got left is that little ding back here and I want to work that back edge by right. itself. Now the uh, now you want a nice surface okay. mount. Yeah, now, right? it, hopefully you folks who see this on camera, you, you see the swirl marks? Um, those are typical of anything that's been ground with a Blanchard machine where you've got a vertical shaft. Now, what we're going to do is now Bob's going to take this over to a uh, surface grinder, which is a horizontal shaft. So as soon as we get this table moved, we'll uh, fire the camera back up and show you what's going on. I'm impressed, Bob. <laughs> I really oh, no am. Problem. I okay. really am.